Did you know that nature teaches segregation? That's right, it does. In fact, I can show it to you in the scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 11 is a very important concept that you need to understand about this world. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians chapter 11, and we'll start out here in verse, verse 14 and read. It says, Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him? Nature can teach you something, in other words. Hmm. But look at the contrast. Verse 15. But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her, for her hair is given her for a covering. What do we see? We see distinction. What do you see out here? All the same trees, all the same plants. No, you see distinction. The creation of a almighty, all-powerful, all-knowing God that wants to create difference and beauty. And he keeps them. They're together, but they're separate. These trees are all growing in the same forest. There aren't you know, segregated blocks of fir trees living here and, and beech trees over here and, you know, quaking aspen over this way and maple trees over that way and, and spruce trees over there and cedar trees. No, they're all together in one forest, but they're separate. See, there's segregation there. There's distinction there. Um, the animal kingdom, birds, deer, moose, foxes, Coyotes, wolves, squirrels, frogs. You get down through the list. Do you ever see them mixing? Do you ever see them, do you ever see them destroying their God-given created characteristics? No, you don't. The only time that you ever see animals being hybridized is when man does it. Man goes out and says, okay, let's go and forcibly breed these together. But if they're left alone out in nature, they won't interbreed. Why? Because God creates distinction. God creates segregation. Did you ever hear of a place called heaven? How about a place called hell? Segregation. Oh no, you know, sometimes the people in heaven can go hang out with the people in hell and sometimes the people in hell can go hang out in heaven. No, no. Saved, lost. Heaven, hell. Right, wrong. Distinction. And what is the purpose of all this? What is the point? God made nature to teach us something. Doth not even nature itself teach you that if a man have long hair, it is a shame unto him. Why? But if a woman have long hair, it is a glory to her. Because there is supposed to be distinction. A man should have long or short hair. A woman should have long hair. Very simple. You see, here's how things work, brethren. This book right here has some very deep things in it. Some things that people can get really messed up in if you don't rightly divide the word of truth. Some things that you can say, you can argue, and you can reason it with your own logic, and you can start to say, well, I feel this. And, well, yes, but what about this? Well, what about this passage here? Well, if you go to the Greek, the word there could be translated as, and well, yes, but I think that if you would also look at the Latin, and the, the, you see, and man starts to mess up the plain common sense stuff in here. So you know what the, another source is for you to go and the see truth? God's creation. Doth not even nature itself teach you? Nature teaches distinction. Nature teaches segregation. There's no hatred involved. These little chickadees that are in the trees around me here, you might be able to hear them in the recording. Um, they like this area in here, and they'll probably come and they'll be flying around me and things. Um, these little chickadees, they don't hate cardinals. They don't hate blue jays. They don't hate nuthatches or, or name the bird. They don't hate them, but they stay separate. Why? Because God creates distinction. God creates natural things to segregate. You know, and the whole thing of interracial marriage, it's such a, it's a hot topic and whatever. It shouldn't be. You know why? Because it wasn't for thousands of years. Man naturally practiced segregation. For thousands of years. You know how I know that? Because there are still distinctions in races. Africa still has black people. China still has Asian people. Japan still has Asian people. 
Europe still has white people, Japhetic people. In other words, if you go with the scriptural term, Japhetic or sons of Japheth. Okay, um, America still has some true indigenous Native American people. And there are white people that have come here to escape the religious persecution of Europe back, you know, centuries ago. My ancestors were included in that. We came here to worship God in our way. Because the Bible says that God shall enlarge Japheth and he shall dwell in the tents of Shem. Shemitic people here living in tents because they were very smart, very nomadic, very uh, living off the land. And I'm sure having a very wonderful time before America became industrialized. Um, segregation. It's wonderful. It's a beautiful thing. And man practiced it for thousands of years. But all of a sudden in the end times, 1963, the anti-miscegenation laws were overthrown in this country. And people say, oh, there's nothing to it. And you can go through the Bible and, and we can find exceptions to the rule and we can say, this is this. And, you know, what about this? And what about this person here? They married interracially and they, they did this and they did that. But you're ignoring the common sense, logical teaching of nature that lines up with scripture. It isn't some, oh, well, you're pantheistic or something that you find God in all things. No, that's not it. I don't believe that God is in everything. This, this uh, leaf right here, is, this isn't God, okay? This is what he created. Obviously, God is outside of his creation. But God created this world so that we could have common sense and look at things and say, you know what? Doth not even nature itself teach you. A man should have short hair. A man with long hair, it's a shame to him. He looks like a girl. I used to know. I used to have long hair as a young man. You know, in my late teens, early 20s, I had long hair. Thought it would look cool or something, you know, look like the cool heavy metal guys I used to listen to. What an abomination. Uh, I brought shame to myself and shame to the Lord. I was a professing Christian. I wasn't saved, but professing Christian. But right now, I have short hair. Just cut my hair this morning, actually. My wife has long hair. I want it to be that way. I have a beard because I want to look like a man. Okay, and if you don't want a beard, want a beard or whatever, it's not required. It doesn't matter. But the whole point is there. There's supposed to be distinction, and God loves distinction, and God makes the nations there in eternity. So you can't say, well, God doesn't care. There's only one race. The you know, I won't even say the word there, the H word, race, um, because it's not a Bible word. It's a New Age word. You know, you, you shouldn't even say that stupid word. But there's only one race, then why would God bring back the races and the nations, the nations, the kindreds, tongues, people in heaven? He sees distinction. You know why? Because God created distinction. And it's a beautiful thing to study those distinctions. To come out here and just walk through this property. This is our property that we own. And just walk through and just, wow, I've never seen that. And I wonder what that flower is. Look at the there's a mushroom growing over there. That's beautiful. I wonder what kind of mushroom that is. Let me take a picture of that and I'll, I'll look it up later. And I wondered, oh, look at this tree here. And I wonder, boy, this, these needles on this. Oh, yeah, it's a balsam fir tree. Yeah, it's a balsam fir. Boy, it's beautiful. And you come out here and the, the uh, scent, the oils that these fir trees and spruce trees put off, it's actually healing. It's amazing. But uh, we should just hybridize everything and just turn it into mush. That's Satanism. That's not of God. I'm going to prove it in this study. Matthew chapter 6. A lot of people, they hear stuff against interracial marriage and they say, Hatred, bigotry. Oh, he's so hateful. Oh, he hates black people. He, he's a racist, bigot, Ku Klux Klan or something. That's not it at all. That is not it at all. I love my black brothers and sisters in Christ. I love my Spanish brothers and sisters in Christ. My Japanese, my, if there's Chinese, I don't even know. I have no idea. I hope that there's some saved Chinese out there, that they aren't all into the communist nonsense over there. Um, hopefully. But, you know, whatever your kindred is, whatever your tongue, people, nation is, I love you for your unique characteristics. But we have to... to be honest about what the Bible condemns, and I will be honest about it. I'm not a career preacher. I'm not a man pleaser, in other words. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25 through 32. It 
says here, Therefore I say unto you, Take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for your body, what ye shall put on. Is not the life more than meat, and the body than raiment? Now he's speaking here, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew chapter 5 through chapter 7. Doctrinally, it's speaking towards somebody that's in the thousand-year kingdom of Jesus Christ. Specifically, Jesus is speaking, this is Old Testament. It's not, it's New Testament books, but it's Old Testament is there until the death of the testator. Jesus dies on the cross. That starts the New Testament. So doctrinally, this is in the Old Testament being spoken to Jews, okay, that are under the law. Please understand that. Many people don't get that. But you can look at Hebrews chapter 9, verse 15 through 17. talks about the death of the testator and the start of the New Testament. It is not Matthew chapter 1. It's Matthew probably about chapter 28. Okay? So understand who this is doctrinally written to. But instruction in righteousness, you can go through the whole Bible, and instruction in righteousness can apply to you. Verse 26. Behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns, yet your heavenly Father feedeth them, are ye not much better than they? So the Lord here says, Behold the fowls of the air. Uh, wouldn't that be the same, similar kind of thing as saying, Doth not even nature itself teach you? Yes, I believe it would be. God manifest in the flesh, the Lord Jesus Christ. He's down here on the earth and he walks around and he says, Hey, come here, let me teach you some things. Behold the fowls of the air. Behold the lilies of the field. Behold this, behold that. Why did he make all of this stuff? Just so evolutionists could look at this and say, wow, a random explosion, 4.6 billion years. Well, maybe we should make it 4.693.28 billion years ago. It exploded and it created this leaf. Wow. And we are distantly related to each other. <laughs> yeah, I, I do actually agree with that. The atheists have about the same IQ as that leaf I just dropped on the ground there. Verse 27, let's continue here. Which of you by taking thought can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall not he much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? God is in control. All right, he didn't step off the throne and let uh, Karl Marx and and um, what's his name, the, the Charles Darwin and uh, Mao Zedong and whatever they're they're sitting on the throne now and they're up there <laughs> like a bunch of idiot children and running the world. No, he's still on the throne. He still takes care of things. Don't worry about it. But um, does it say there, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven? Beautiful yellow bright flowers here and uh this is what's left of the goldenrod dried up gone to seed not very attractive anymore but boy a little while ago about a month ago it was beautiful beautiful yellow flowers little bees little honeybees flying between the flowers and pollinating and just beautiful and the leaves of that can heal you of a lot of different things Take a uh, goldenrod tea. It's an amazing herbal remedy. And it's all just there for you to see, there for you to learn from. So much that you could get into with just that analogy right there that Jesus Christ gave right here. Verse 31. Um, Therefore take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or where, what shall we drink, or wherewithal shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Um, now, if the Lord doesn't see distinction between different races, why would he just say that? He just made a racial distinction. After all these things do the Gentiles seek. I'm a Gentile. 100% pure Gentile. Um, I have the video up showing the genealogy, the DNA test. My older sister took it. So we're of the same family. I'm not adopted. <laughs> and same family. It's 100% European. 100%. Uh, I don't hate anybody else, like I've said. <laughs> but I get the thing all the time, oh, you're, you must be Jewish or something. You look Jewish. I'm not Jewish. All right. uh, primarily German. A little bit of Scottish. That's why I'm wearing my black, and, uh, black watch tartan uh, pattern shirt here because of the Campbell clan. 
Uh, my maternal grandmother was a Campbell, going back to the actual founder of the Campbell clan. So, um, uh, yeah, I do have some Scottish Highlander blood in me. Um, that's why I'm a little bit crazy in the head, I guess, you know, part German, part Scottish Highlander. Uh, <laughs> that's why I like to fight, I guess. But uh, this whole thing is, you have to remember that God is making a distinction here. And when I say God, I mean Jesus. And when I say Jesus, I mean God, because they're one and the same being, okay? It's not modalism that they switch modes. No, it's three parts to one being. Okay, that's very important to understand. There is no Trinity in the Bible. Watch my studies on that if you don't understand the Godhead doctrine, extremely important uh, doctrine of Scripture. But God on the earth, and He says, look at the ravens, look at the, consider the lilies, look at this, look at that. Doth not even nature itself teach you? That's what He's trying to say. And God makes a distinction between Jews and Gentiles. Oh, it's my dog coming. If you can see him. Hey, what are you doing? All right, come on. Get. Go on. So, heard something running through the woods. Out of here, you never know what that's going to be. We have some big moose on the property here that I've seen numerous times, and bear and deer and other things. But uh, let's go to Romans chapter 1. We'll see another part of Scripture where it talks about God's creation. You know, again, the thing that blows my mind, people, oh, well, you're going to try to fight me on this. And I think, do you realize the blessing you're missing when you try to fight me on this whole thing? The beauty of distinction, the beauty of diversity. <laughs> I mean, just come out here and just say, you know, I look around and I'm saying, wow, look at that. That's beautiful. Those are beech trees over there. And this is a, this, you know, tree here. This is a birch tree. These are birch leaves here paper bark uh, birch and um, you know a balsam fir tree and there's a spruce tree over that way and cedar tree and you take the cedar leaves the the northern white cedars and you smash it up in your fingers and oh man it smells just so good it's like a kind of a strawberry citrus smell to it really amazing stuff and you get somebody and they just come out here and they go oh I see your trees I don't see any distinction they're all just trees man Wow, you're fun to be around, <laughs> you know. Hey, all I see are just people. I don't see any distinctions. <sighs> it's terrible. What a way to live. I like to see distinctions between people. I like to learn from other cultures. It's kind of funny, too, because you go to another country, you get what? Culture shock. Or at least you used to. You know, boy, things are so different here. But they, they drive on a different side of the road or they, they do this. And you know, I remember going to Costa Rica for the first time. We get off the airplane in uh, or the airport uh, off the airplane but we're at the airport get out of the airport and we're heading to the mission home thing that we were going to be working on in san jose costa rica and we're driving along and and uh see this yard in front of this people's house and it's on fire they're out there standing there you know burning their yard and uh somebody said what are they doing and the missionary said oh they're just mowing their grass <laughs> oh okay you know Go out back and there's barbed wire hung up in the backyard of these houses. And why do they have barbed wire up this high? That doesn't make any sense. What's that all about? Oh, that's how they hang their clothes up. They just take their clothes up there. You don't need clothes pins. You just put it over barbed wire. Well, if it's windy, doesn't that rip holes in it? Well, yeah, you just mend those holes then. <laughs> you know? Oh, okay. A lot of the cultural differences down there. Um, and praise the Lord. That's how it should be cultural differences. But you see, Satan's kingdom that's coming, his new world order, wants to eliminate the differences. We're all the same. There's no difference. Yes, there is. And it's funny, too, because the devil's doing the same thing with religion, isn't he? The ecumenical movement. Oh, let's all come back. Come back to the Catholic Church. Let's all just put aside our differences. Let's, let's not argue. Let's not fight and whatever. You better fight. Romans chapter 1, verse 18 through 20 says, For the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and unrighteousness of men who hold the truth in unrighteousness, because that which may be known of God is manifest in them, for God hath showed it unto them. 
for the invisible things of him from the creation of the world are clearly seen. Doth, any, doth not even nature itself teach you? Being understood by the things that are made, even his eternal power and Godhead, so that they are without excuse. There's no excuse. You have no ability to say, I never knew. Some evolutionists get up there before the Lord, you know, atheistic evolutionists, and they say, I didn't know you existed. Are you kidding? Look out here. This all created itself by random chance, by an explosion billions of years ago. Everybody is going to have, uh, I'll, okay, let me say it this way. No one is going to have an excuse. Okay, everyone can say, I have seen distinction. There are differences. My wife tells me stories of, you know, she go into the military and she deal with a, a black soldier here and this girl's a Hispanic or something and this guy over here, he was from Japan and this one here. And she said, they're all different. And it was a good thing. But the devil comes along and he says, we have to get rid of that. I mean, think about it this way. What would you call it if I said, I'm going to take an army of 10,000 men, white men from Europe, and I'm going to go to Africa, and I'm going to not allow the men, African men, to have children with the African women. And I'm going to have my white guys breed with those African women. And then after that, we'll have more white guys come in and breed with the offspring of that. How long would it take before you would breed away the black people of Africa? and get rid of them, and destroy their culture. Well, would that be a good thing or a bad thing? I mean, integration. Let's bring in integration. Let's just mix everybody together. And what has that done? Has it led to good things? No. No, it hasn't. Integration destroys countries. You know, oh, well, we're, brother, we're not of this world. We're supposed to not care about national stuff and cult culture and all these other things. Who cares? You're very ignorant of Scripture when you say that. You see, God cares about distinctions. God cares about culture. God wants us separate. That's what the whole Tower of Babel was all about. But you see, you get so keyed up on this whole thing. You have to prove that interracial marriage is fine and integration is fine. And it's just great because that's how you've been educated by the corrupt public school system and by Hollywood. Maybe you ought to shut off the movies there, wicked perverts. But what you're doing is you're coming out and you're saying, I will side with the world and go against the scriptures. Go against what nature can teach you. And you have to do it. So you'll just come and you'll, well... What about this argument? Um, hmm, what about this? What, what about the clear things that I'm showing you right here? The common sense. See, the scriptures work like this. And I have a whole sermon I did on this. Milk and meat, spiritually speaking. The milk is there. It's the common sense thing that anybody can get. Okay, Jesus is God. That's milk doctrine, all right? Now you get into the Godhead doctrine and Godhead versus the Trinitarian view and then modalist view as well. Yeah, it gets into some meaty stuff there. Absolutely. No question. But Jesus is God. Jesus created the world. That's milk. Jesus died on the cross. That's milk. All right? So what a lot of babes in Christ do is they'll go come in here and try to find all the meat doctrine and they're going and trying to find everything and they start to forget the milk, the common sense and one of the common sense things that the Lord taught himself when he was on, on the earth, and we just read about right there in the scriptures, nature can teach you. The invisible things of the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made. You can look and you can see God likes distinction. You know, I don't think I'm going to find too many pineapples out here today or bananas growing in the trees. Why? Because they don't grow here. God created the world to be different. You know, I was down in Costa Rica uh, back in uh, 1991, I think was the first year I went, um, left in January. My grandfather died and we left a little bit after that. Didn't know he was going to die. We had the, this big mission trip thing planned for months in advance. And my grandmother said, you know, he would, grandpa would want you to go. 
So it was my father, my mother, myself, and my little sister. And we went down to Costa Rica with our church at the time. And, uh, you know, we didn't see snow down there. Left in January from Pennsylvania, and it was cold and snowing. And uh, I remember we had our winter coats on, and we got to the airport, and we gave our winter coats to the person that drove us, you know. And then we went into the airport, and we're in there with our short sleeve shirts on and everything because we didn't want to carry our winter coats the whole way down to Costa Rica. You know, <laughs> we didn't need them down there. Um, and then they just brought them back when they came and picked us up. But, you know, I left for the snowy uh, east coast and went down to Costa Rica, down to the jungles in the tropics down there watching big blue butterflies flying around and parrots in the trees and monkeys, you know, swinging around on the trees and things. And you know what? I was so disappointed. I said, I, will, I miss America. I wish this place was more like America. No, I didn't say that at all. I was glad to see another culture. It taught me a lot. I learned a lot. Had a great appreciation for their culture down there and some of the things that they did. Some things they did right. Some things I thought, this is really neat. You know, Americans could learn from this. Other things I thought, well, we have them beat on that one. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful experience. I think the problem with some of you out there with the integration mindset, you just haven't gotten out enough. A little bit too sheltered in the city you live in there or whatever with all the integrated people living around you. Trying to make the Bible teach that that's okay because otherwise you'd stick out and look bad. But let's go to one of the, uh, the big ones here. What, what about Galatians 3.28? What about Galatians 3.28? There's neither Jew nor Gentile, Brother Brian. God sees no distinction. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There's another place where it talks about Jew and Gentile. There's, God is no respecter of persons, so we can't be either. God sees no distinction. Really? Galatians 3.28. There's neither Jew nor Greek. There we go. Keep reading. There is neither bond nor free. Hmm. There is neither male nor female. For ye are for ye are all one in Christ Jesus. Okay. Uh, so there's no racial distinctions there? You want to use that to prove that? Well then that means that you'd also have to believe that there's no difference between a man and a woman. Uh, you're getting a little progressive on me there, aren't you? Uh, <laughs> uh, yes, there is a difference between men and women. As much as Satan and his little people out there are trying to erase the distinctions. Uh, yes, there's a big distinction between men and women. And there's a big distinction between Jew and Gentile or Jew and Greek. All right. It's not a bad thing. All right. What the verse is talking about there in Galatians chapter 3, understand the whole context of the book of Galatians, is you have Jews coming to Gentiles and saying, you have to act like a Jew. And Paul is clearing up and he's saying, hey, you know what? In Christ, the Lord doesn't care. There isn't some kind of a thing of, you know, you get to heaven and it's the Jewish quarter and the, and the Gentile section of town or something there. The mansions over here are for the Gentiles, the ones over there are for the Jews. No, no. In Christ, there's distinction. But it's not some kind of a thing of special treatment for one or the other. Somehow, you know, you have to, as when you get saved, you have to start acting like you're a Jew or something. No, you don't. No, you don't. Um, God created national boundaries. God created those things. Well, that's not true because we know that the Rothschilds, they created modern-day Israel. And, and the Catholics, they, with their crusades and everything, they created the Holy Roman Empire. And you're so ignorant of history, Denlinger. Um, actually, no, I'm not because, you see, I understand who controlled the Catholics, who controlled the Rothschilds. You see, my God is big enough to control everyone. He can just say, hey, you do my bidding. Hey, over there, nation of Israel is coming back. You pay the money. There, Rothschild. Go over to here. Go to there. I want you to reform the nation of Israel. They're coming back in unbelief, just like you there, Jewish Rothschild. You're coming back in unbelief too. And I'm going to give you a bad whipping. See, that's my God. My God controls everything. If your God doesn't control everything and there's, you know, the Illuminati, they do things that, and God, your God doesn't control that, your God doesn't tell them what to do and give them orders, uh, you might want to get a different God. He's not very powerful. <clears throat> Romans chapter 2. 
Here's another one that the uh, replacement theology nuts will go after. And I've preached on this stuff for so many years. You know, it's one of the frustrating things to me because these, these people, um, there's so many people that come along and it, I've learned over the years what, how to spot which cult we're talking about. You get the people and they come and they say, his name is not Jesus, it's Yeshua. The word, the J did not exist, you know, up until recently. So when you say Jesus, you're saying, yay, Zeus. Zeus, the Greek. Okay, you're dealing with a Hebrew roots cult nut. Somebody who says that they're a Jew and they're not. The Bible says that they're the synagogue of Satan. Uh, no, thank you. Don't want anything to do with you. Then you get the ones that come along and they say, the Jews in Israel aren't really true Jews. Did you, did you know that? They're a creation of the Rothschilds. Oh, okay, then uh, who are the true Jews? Well, the church. <laughs> yeah, okay. Replacement theology. Um, I've learned all the different little things there. Uh, futurism is a Jesuit creation. Did you know that? Oh, really? Uh, so Revelation already happened and just symbolically happened already. And there's no coming Mark of the Beast, no coming New World Order, or, you know, the end time stuff. It's not really, we're not really in the end times. We're just kind of, you know, there. There's no thousand year reign of Jesus Christ. <laughs> yeah. I know all these different little groups. I know all the different little ways that they try to mess with the scriptures. But the problem is, um, unless you watch a lot of my studies, you're going to get picked off. By these heretics because you see it takes years to study and I can't just oh brother I have a question here can I write it in the comments you know I'm going to write you know 200 word comment and answer me back in 50 words or less or something I can't do it I just can't so I try to go over some things again and again please understand to my faithful viewers that have watched most of my stuff Understand why I have to bring this stuff up over and over again because of new viewers coming along that see this new material and haven't had the chance to go through the years of study and research that I've done and brought out. But the information is there. It's just hidden in with a whole lot of preaching where I kick different movements. So, but here's one of the ones that replacement theology people will do, and you could use this too as a as a uh, integrationist, you could come along and you could say, again, there's neither Jew nor Greek, whatever. Um, Romans chapter 2, verse 28. For he is not a Jew which is one outwardly. Neither is that circumcision, circumcision which is outward in the flesh, but he is a Jew which is one inwardly, and circumcision is that of the heart and the spirit and not in the letter, whose praise is not of men but of God. See, there you go. The Jews in Israel, they're not really true Jews. The true Jews are the spiritual Jews that are actually the Christians. So the spiritual Jews that are Christians are the real Jews, but the Jews in Israel are not real Jews. And you say, uh, then why'd you call them Jews? <laughs> uh, Stephen Anderson came out with this whole thing, faithful word, Catholic cult, and uh, the new IFB and all this stuff. They were coming out with stuff. The Jews in Israel are fake. They're not real Jews then stop calling them Jews. <laughs> wow, brilliant. Um, no, they are actually Jews. Well, they're, no, spiritual. Okay, this passage is talking about the thing of just because they're physical Jews doesn't mean that they're automatically saved. All right? But that doesn't mean that there's, there's no such thing as a physical Jew and that we're all just one race. It doesn't mean that. How do you know? Keep reading. Romans chapter 3. And verse 1 through down, down through verse 4. What advantage then hath the Jew? Yes, there is a difference between Jews and Gentiles. Or what profit is there of circumcision? Much every way, chiefly because that unto them were committed the oracles of God. For what if some did not believe? Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? Um, interesting because what if, uh, what if some did not believe? Do the Jews in Israel right now believe that Jesus is their Messiah? No. Well, then they don't believe. So Jesus would have had to fulfill all the prophecies of the Old Testament with his first coming. Where does the Bible say that? It doesn't. But that's what the average Jew today in Israel believes, the unbelieving Jews. The Messiah, when he comes, he has to fulfill everything in one shot. There's no scripture saying that. None. And you can clearly see in the Old Testament there's multiple places where they have rejected the Messiah that's coming. And he comes again another time and they're saying, you know, who's this with, you know, his hands are pierced and whatever else. 
I'm not going to go into the whole study of that right now. It's not part of this sermon here. But the whole point is, the Jews in Israel, they don't believe in Jesus. Shall their unbelief make the faith of God without effect? As the Bible says there, God forbid, verse 4, Yea, let God be true, but every man a liar, as it is written, Scripture is your authority, that thou mightest be justified in thy sayings and mightest overcome when thou art judged. You know, I can overcome any of you out there because I have the Scripture as my standard, but I also have nature itself that can teach you. So if you want to go against what the Scriptures teach and go and find exceptions to the rule that God says, don't mingle your seed, don't go and intermarry, don't mix, don't get this and hybridize that and hybridize that, please don't do that. Don't go out and genetically modify plants and things so that they can have poison engineered into them, you know, glyphosate and things like that so that it'll kill a bug when the bug goes to eat it. You know, that's a bad idea. You know, and, and we have uh, these different plants and things that we can grow and that, that are out there in the field and they'll, it'll kill and other native plants and things. Yeah, don't do that. Don't mess with my creation. Oh, I think we can do it. And you're going to make a mess of things. God is going to be true. God, let God be true and every man a liar. You want to come out and you want to go against God's created order? You're going to be found out to be a liar. It's just that simple. Back, to, or let's go to uh, Romans chapter 3, verse 9 through 10. And I will overcome the people that judge me because I, like I said, common sense and scripture. Nature itself can teach you segregation. Verse 9, What then? Are we better than they? No, in no wise. For we have before both proved both Jews and Gentiles that they are all under sin. As it is written, there is none righteous, no, not one. Um, Jews and Gentiles are all sinners. That's one thing we do have in common. The people that are of Israel, they are sinners. Myself, the black people in Africa, the Spanish people, the Mayan, Aztec, you know, whatever down in South America, the native people of down there, the native people, indigenous people of America, North America, um, Russia, China, Japan, Thailand, Cambodia, Laos, Norway, Scand you know, the Scandinavian countries, Sweden, Finland, whatever. They're all sinners. That's the one thing we can have in common. That we all sin. All have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So, and uh, all flesh is grass. It's like grass. It falls apart. The beauty of it fades. Just look at that rotting. All die. Well, Mr. Chickadee over here, he's going to die someday. Maybe he'll die this winter. I don't know. All flesh dies. All things down here die. But God made nature for a purpose. And that is to teach us distinction. And you know, little Mr. Chickadee over here, he shouldn't be embarrassed about the fact that he's not a bald eagle. I don't think little Mr. Chickadee over there cares. He doesn't go and find some mirror someplace or look at himself in the stream in the water and he, he looks and he says, I wish I was an eagle, you know. Boy, I wish I was an eagle. I wonder if I could date an eagle girl and then maybe, you know, our children would come out half eagle, half chickadee. Or something. No. No. Don't be ashamed of who God made you to be. Jesus loves the little children. All the children of the world. Red and yellow, black and white. They are precious in his sight. Jesus loves the little children of the world. little song, you know, from when I was raised in Sunday school and things. Heard that. Jesus loves little children. You don't have to be ashamed of who you are. Jesus loves everything out here. Different purposes for it. But uh, he created this. It's beautiful. It's a wonderful thing. 
I don't know why people get so mad at me about this whole thing. But just one more thing to turn to here, one more point I need to make in this study. Matthew chapter 24. Matthew chapter 24, verse 37 through 39. The Bible says here, But as the days of Noe were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days they, that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage, until the day that Noe entered into the ark, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. So shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Um, the, the end times, it's uh, best symbolized by what was going on back in the days of Noah before the flood. Let's go back there. Genesis chapter 6. They were marrying and giving in marriage. What kind of marriage were they doing? You say, well, that can't, it can't be interracial marriage, Brother Brian, because they didn't have different races back then. The, the three distinct you know, kindreds there, Shem, Ham, Japheth, uh, they didn't even exist yet. You're absolutely correct. Absolutely. I was not about to teach in some kind of an interracial marriage type of a thing because it's not true. There were no different races back then. The Tower of Babel happens chapters later, after the flood. But what were they doing? Genesis chapter 6, verse 8. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations. Now, what does that mean? What does And, and it says, and Noah walked with God. We'll stop there for now. Noah was perfect in his generations. What does that mean? Does that mean that Noah was perfect and sinless? No, because that would contradict Scripture. Uh, there is none righteous. Jesus Christ is the only man that ever lived without sin. So Noah couldn't have been perfect in the sense of sinless. What was the perfect? It was the fact that Noah had not messed around with strange flesh. How do you know? The old Bible-believing rule, keep Reading. A text without a context is a pretext. Always remember that. Verse 10. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. Was it violence then that, that Noah was departing from? No, because we have to keep reading. And God looked upon the earth, and behold, it was corrupt, for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. And God said unto Noah, the end of all flesh is come before me, for the earth is filled with violence through them, and behold, I will destroy them with the earth. All flesh had corrupted his way. And you read in the first part of Genesis chapter 6 there, you go down through, the sons of God were seeing the daughters of men that they were fair, verse 2, and they took them wives of all which they chose. You know, and then verse 4 talks about there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, and the same became mighty men which were of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth, and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Exactly like today. But uh, you study it, the sons of God in the Old Testament are angels. Angels were coming down and having children with women. Where do you think all the legends of uh, Zeus and you know, this woman get together, a woman there, mortal woman, and they have Hercules. And then you have the Minotaur, God's mating with animals. Hmm. Oh, those are just stories. Okay, where did the stories come from? Just somebody made them up? Or were they remembering something that had happened in the past? Stories that had been passed down. But all flesh had corrupted his way on the earth. You see, but it was violence, brother. It's violence, very clearly. Corrupted flesh leads to violence. You know how the uh, sodomite thing got started here in America? The Stonewall riots. Violence. Hmm. Civil rights movement. A lot of violent marches. Violent revolutions. What are we seeing now? The different uh, pride parades. And they're all ready for violence. You got in a protest, something like that, they'll be violent towards you. Huh. And it comes from corrupting flesh. And more specifically, from ignoring nature. 
what God created and trying to go and blend things that are unnatural and put them together. And I can tell you right now, I've known different interracial marriages, people that were interracially, um, you know, from completely different races. And, um, you know, and again, people get into the whole thing. Of, well, define race and can you define the different boundaries and can you do all this different stuff? Brethren, just use your common sense. <laughs> I mean, do you not have any common sense at all? You know, and well, I'm mixed into this and I'm mixed into that. Well, figure it out. Okay, I cannot figure that stuff out for you. All right, one of the things, the inheritance that God gives to people that are of proper kindred purity um, and in areas where that are similar to where they were you know, born and raised, their ancestral heritage ties to, is that there's certain diet and things like that, weather and, and you know, climate and things, and you'll find great inheritance in that. I'm discovering that stuff. It's something that's really unique, and I love it. As I get more into eating more foods like my ancestors would have eaten and natural wild foods from the area here, I feel my health improving. And, you know, getting into the thing of the proper times to go to sleep and the right types of clothing to wear. This is a wool shirt, pure wool shirt, and a cotton shirt underneath. And I have, you know, cotton jeans on down here and wool long underwear getting pretty cold out it feels great and i love the culture and i love i love the the northern environment and the diet and everything else there's so much to discover but when you just go to some city someplace where it's just all blended your modern little tower of babel city there and it's everything's all blended and you don't say anything about your i'm different than other people or whatever else and I've seen people like that, and they just are miserable, and they fight. And I, people write me, and they say, yeah, you know, my parents were two different races, and, and there was fighting all the time, and it was, it was terrible. And now I'm struggling because I don't know how to identify with any group. Well, brethren, I'm sorry to hear that. I really am. I mean, I remember hearing a thing years ago where my grandmother, my paternal grandmother, in other words, my dad's mother, and, um, and one of my brothers married a, a girl that was of a very different race and, um, and, you know, both white, but, you know, very much culturally different than what our ancestry was. And my grandmother was very upset about that. And I remember they were laughing at her behind her back and saying she was a racist and all her old fashioned ideals and whatever. And I kind of at the time thought that does sound kind of weird. It doesn't sound weird to me anymore. I understand what she meant. And she wasn't hateful towards them. She didn't say, don't ever come around here. You're wicked perverts or anything like that. You're filthy. You're disgusting. I hate you. I hope you die. Or... She didn't say that at all. She was very kind to them, but it was just that you should have married better. Why? Because she understood some things. They were born in the early 1900s, my grandparents. And I remember my grandfather... Um, he died, like I said, 1991. And, um, and I remember he just was, he was so vexed by this world. Just so, I'd go over there, it was right when Bill Clinton had been elected, you know, the first time around. And Bill Clinton, well, the first things he did was the whole, I think it was don't ask, don't tell or something, you know, with the sodomite thing in the military. And I remember Grandpa, he just was shaking his head and he's saying, what is this country coming to? Yeah, when, you, when you're born in the early 1900s, I think it was 1909, I think, is when he was born, if I remember correctly. And um, he, he saw some things change over the years. And uh, I'm not that old right now. I'm 48 years old. But, you know, I've seen a lot of things change in this world. And it's not been for the better. All right. Um, I'm still in shock by what started in 2020 that I'm not allowed to talk about here on YouTube. I'm still in shock that so many people went along with it. Just stunned at that whole thing. And all you'd have to do is just say, you know what? Come out here and doth not even nature itself teach you. It's normal to breathe. If you know what I mean. Um, so that's going to be it for this study. Um, you know, I could go off on this subject and keep going on it and, 
and the questions that people come up with integrationists they come up they'll they'll just search through the scriptures they'll look through the scriptures for any kind of little thing that they can do to say we should you know mixing is fine everything's fine it's perfectly fine we can go through and you're ignoring segregation that's all around you in God's creation why enjoy distinctions I don't know if I ever become a, a worldwide traveling uh, preacher or something like that. I'm not really much into travel, especially with the air, airports the way that they are. But, you know, if I ever did, I want to go to other countries and I want to see the people as they are there. I want to go and I want to see how they live. And I want to eat their foods, their native foods. Because I like distinction. So that is going to be it. Um, thank you very much for watching, and uh, this is your standard, brethren, the Word of God, the King James Bible. See you in the next study. King James Video Ministries has been faithfully preaching and teaching from God's Word since 2008. Our YouTube channel has never been monetized, and we do not accept money from the lost world because this would violate the Scriptures. King James Video Ministries is supported by saved brethren in accordance with 1 Timothy chapter 5, verses 17 through 18. If you have been blessed by our videos, we would ask that you prayerfully consider supporting this ministry financially. You can donate online by visiting www.kingjamesvideoministries.com or by sending a check or money order to King James Video Ministries, P.O. Box 214, Hatton, Maine, 04765. Thank you to all who donate to this ministry, and we pray for the Lord's blessing in your lives.